Hello, all my wonderful people. It's so good to have you all out there. Today is uh, Wednesday, September 28th, 2022. Is it okay if I tape? Everybody okay? Okay, yeah. thank you very much. Okay. Let's take a look at this chapter 22 here. What is the other source of contracts? And we know the answer to that is what? Article 2, right? Uh, UCC, right? Applies to contracts for the sale of goods, right? What did we examine in chapters 11 to 19, Mustafa? Uh, we examined a common law of contracts. Yes, right? The common law of contracts. That's what we did in Business Law 1, right? And common law governs what? Uh, contracts whose subject matter is real estate or services. Remember that? Now, what does the UCC govern? What kind of activities? Another source, right? Other than common law, Article 2 of the UCC. UCC applies to contracts for the what? Sale of what? Sale of goods, right? And we actually had a little bit of that, uh, um, what, in that last chapter when we had to learn a diagram of statute of frauds, right? Pro evidence rule. If it's law one, you had to learn that. It's on your final exam. Mm -hmm. I always put it on my final, right? That, that every night. So we had to, do, you had to know about a sale of goods. But here, we're on the next level. And it talks to us and says, our text says, I usually ask questions, what does Article 2 govern? UCC Article 2 uh, applies to contracts for the sale of goods, governing the sale of everything from boats to televisions to flash drives. Why does Article 2 exist? What's the purpose of it? Article 2 exists as a result of work of business people, commercial transaction lawyers, and legal experts who together have developed what? A body of law, yes. Pseudo for what, my wonderful people? Why do we need the fast pace of business? In fact, why is there a fast pace of business going on right now more than was going on 70 years ago? Is business faster paced in this day and age, 2022, than it was in uh, uh, 1952? Yeah. Why? Why? Oh, technology? You mean we can use the what now? Internet? Huh? Are they using internet for sales? Absolutely, right? So it's very, very fast paced. Then the next question, uh, I asked why does Article 2 exist in that one. Article 2 continues to redefine and modify to ensure seamless laws for transactions of goods across the country. All right. A sale of goods is defined as what underneath Article 2? Transfer a title to tangible personal property for a price, right? And the price may be a payment of what? Show me the what? Okay, or an exchange of other property or a performance of service. Now, what, um, what's the purpose of Article 2? What's the purpose? Streamline to keep businesses moving quickly and fast and efficiently, right? Uh, the next question you usually ask is, the parties to a sale person who owns the goods. Okay, the parties to a sale are the person who owns the goods, which is the what? That's your seller or what? Vendor. And the person to whom the title is transferred is called the what? Very good. My next question. Um, all right, I already asked the question. Who are the parties to a sales contract? I gave you the answer. Shucks. Okay. Uh, what? <laughs> What's not covered by Article 2? There you go. What's not covered by Article 2? Mm. Insurance policies, commercial papers such as checks and promissory notes because they are regulated under Article 3 and 4 of UCC and real estate such as houses, taxes, farms, and land. Thank you. So here, not covered underneath Article 2. Thank you, sir. Uh, my student. Investment securities such as stocks and bonds, the sale which is regulated by Article 8 of the UCC, right? And then what? Insurance policies. Commercial papers, such as checks, promissory notes, right? Because they are, are regulated under what? Article 3, right? Commercial paper, right? And Article 4 of the UCC. And then real estate, such as what? Your houses, factories, farms, land, etc. right? So how do we find goods underneath, underneath the UCC? How do we find goods underneath the UCC? How do we do that? Help me out, please, um, Isha. How do we find goods under the UCC? How do we find goods? 
And the answer is goods are defined under the UCC, consists of all forms of tangible personal property, including the problem you guys are working on, right? Specially manufactured goods, everything from a fan to a painting to a yacht. All right. What are goods, Mustafa? What are goods? Not just property. What else? You're right. What else, though? Commodities? What kind of commodities? What do you mean by commodities? Uh, on page 423, still. Nature of goods. Oh, what's... So basically, things that have a shelf life. Okay, and, and let me ask you this question. Uh, it may, may not, but, but let me ask you this question. Notice where it says, on the, the subheading here, nature of goods. What's next to that on the left side of that, Christina? Left side. CPA. Oh, CPA? Certified public accounting exam, huh? It might show up someday. Or you count this out there, right? Yeah, so... so Article 2 applies not only to contracts for sale of familiar items of personal property, such as your automobiles or chairs, but also to the transfer of commodities such as oil, gasoline, milk, grain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? What are existing goods? Help me out, Christina. What are existing goods? What are they? Existing goods. And what's that mean, Isha? Thank you, Christina. What's that mean? Existing goods? Oh, we don't have to wait for them? Okay, very good. Uh, uh, my student Charles, what are future goods? Future goods? Future goods are goods that exist physically, but are not owned by the seller and goods that are not in your so goods that are promised and goods that have not been sold yet. When might we see the occasion to want to have, or, or a business that w might want to have future goods? Uh huh. And um, what's the season we're about to enter into? Winter. Very soon. Yes, winter. Oh, and what comes during that period of time? Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Hanukkah, right? Uh, uh, um, um, Christmas, uh, Three Kings Day, right? Guanza, right? What's that? What'd you say? Oh, the day after the day after uh, Thanksgiving. And so, um, do you think that there might be orders? Well, remember we did. I think last class that we did the one about Target and the Christmas cards, right? Remember they ordered the Christmas cards and they got lost and all kinds of stuff, right? So, um, do you think that? Businesses are right now getting ready for uh, those holidays coming up? Yes. Why? Because there's going to be a surplus. Why? 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 I mean, why? You know. Not for a higher demand. Huh? A higher demand. A higher demand? Yes. You mean they make more money during the holiday season? Yes. You mean they make money off of Jesus? Yes, oh. sadly. Huh? Or you can make money off anything. Ah, uh, but Christmas <laughs> is something special. Special, I mean, you know. And Hanukkah, too. Now, even before Halloween, there's Christmas stuff out now. Hold it. No, no. But that's a Christmas tree shop, right? No. They sell way more than just Christmas stuff. CVS, Walgreens. <laughs> <laughs> hold, yeah. hold, hold it. Hold it. The, already there's Christmas items out? Yes. yes. I guess I don't get out enough. The next aisle of Halloween, the next aisle is Christmas. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Have you ever noticed the spirit of Halloween just pop up miraculously in September, October? Yeah, Halloween's not until what? October, right? It's about to be. <laughs> We're still in September, right? <laughs> Next week is October. I know, but they've had the Halloween stuff up. I think it started like oh, okay. early. I, I remember seeing stuff like, hold it. Is it, is it October? Oh, that Christmas items up too? Christmas? Yeah. yeah. And it says Christmas stuff? You know, I mean, you, oh, what, what yeah. are they? It's, it's lights, it's bows, it's trees. Trees already? It's Christmas. I mean, the Yeah, but still. Yeah, I mean, it was almost August the other day. Why, 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 why? You're saying they're doing this? Why? What's the purpose? Because of the increased demand. So you mean some, some corporations, they actually break even or make their profits during this, oh, during Christmas, Hanukkah, you know, 
uh, depending upon when Ramadan is also, right, and everything like that, and also they, they make that money, okay, and, uh, and it's a multicultural, multi-ethnic, so it's like, hey, make that money, right? And so here, those would be future goods, but it looks like they ordered the Christmas trees already, right? You say they're up someplace yeah, in September? Good. Come yeah. And the, the lights, they're up too. Uh, just a tree? Not the lights. Okay, all right. Well, no, well, they, they ordered them, right? They ordered them ahead of time, so they weren't in existence. Now they're in existence and they're there. I'm talking about for the consumer itself. Well, for the consumer, they're, they're being held out for them to buy it. But in terms of just the, the commercial aspect of it, that, that I thought was very important is that, so all, all other goods are called future goods, which include both goods that physically exist, that might be at the warehouse someplace, right? Uh, uh, what, Amazon may ha be holding on to them someplace, right? Uh, but are not owned by the seller and the goods that have not yet been produced. So here you have, they might be in existence, but we don't own them yet, right? Or they haven't been produced. And I think you're working on a specially manufactured one assignments, right? A special manufactured one, which we has certain rules there too. As when a buyer contracts to purchase um, custom-made office furniture, right? So that's specially manufactured. It's made to your what? Specifications? And there's certain rules with respect to that, which uh, you, you've already read, I'm sure. Let me, let me ask this question. How do we distinguish a sale from a bailment, a gift, a contract for service, or when there's a contract for service and goods? Actually, that's one of the questions that you're doing that we have to go over, right? But the first, first one, bailment. Is a bailment a sale of goods? Answer is what? No. no. In a bailment, you only get what? Possession. Which is not ownership, right? A bailment is not a sale because only possession is transferred to a bailee. And we went over that in other chapters, right? Title to property is not transferred. Uh, you go back and look at chapter 20. A lease of goods, such as an automobile, is governed by Article 2A of the UCC, which is covered later in, in the section, right? You read that already, lease of goods for this chapter. What about a gift? Is a gift a sale of goods? What's the answer? How come? And we didn't what? Yeah, you didn't buy, right? So a gift is gratuitous, free, transfer a title to property, right? The Article 2 definition of sale requires that the transfer of title be made for a what? Show me the money, right? Prices, something of value. Gifts are not covered underneath Article 2. Very good. Now, what about these contracts for services? Is that Article 2? That, that sale of goods? No? A contract for services, such as a contract for painting a home, is not a sale of goods and is not covered under Article 2 of the UCC. Where are they covered? What did we do last semester, or last time you had me from this whole one? Common law. Very good. Contract for services are governed by common law principle. Now, here's a question. Oh, we should do number one. Let's do number one. Someone read number one to me, please. Thank you. All right. Triple H Construction Company contracted with Hunter Run Stables Incorporated to direct the horse barn and riding arena in on Hunter's Run property in Big Flats, New York. Hunter's Run got a guarantee on his contract with Triple H that, quote, such a design would stand so shown will support its weight and will withstand natural forces including but not limited to snow, road, and wind. End quote. Hunter's run also got the function of the pie, manufacturer of the Raptors, called Rig Rig Pie. Hereby guarantees that the design of the construction of the work farm by Triple H will support the weight of such barn and the snow, load, and wind as it was drawn. End quote. The barn was completed in 1983 and collapsed under the weight of its own 1994. Hunter's run soon took away the other folks who remedy. Thank you very much. So what happened if you read that? What happened in this case? I want people. What in the world's going on here? Hmm? Okay, a house barn. And a writing area, right, on Hunter Run's property at Big Flats, good. Yeah, um, 
What did Hunter Run receive from them? They got a what? The Hunter Run got a guarantee. Uh huh. That what? Such design with the span so shown will support its weight and will withstand natural forces, including but not limited to snow loading and wind, right? That's in quotation marks. Mm -hmm. Then what happened? What else did Hunter Run get? Okay, all right. So they, they got a guarantee on that, right? What else? What else? The barn collapse on the earth. Oh, so it, it fell, huh? On the way to snow? So they completed 1983, and then in 1994, it collapsed? Yeah. Now what happened next? Hunter Article 2 remedies. Now, why does the textbook have this example, thank you for reading that, in, in, the, in the, this example in our text? Why? Why? <laughs> mm -hmm. What's what you what you know how you ask questions, right? What error laws been triggered by the question? What page is the right answer? What's the right answer? Whenever we do these problems, right? Physical law questions. That's how, how we, we always do it. So what error laws were triggered by this I'll give you a hint. The the heading I was about to go into. <laughs> if I stop. That's my hint. <laughs> That's my hint. The answer is contract for what? For services or sale of goods? Hmm? Contract for goods and services? Hmm? What's that? On page 424. Why is this relevant? And you may see this on the bar exam, right? It's a great question to ask. Why? Because it, it determines a student knows what? The difference between what? Common law and what? Article 2. And what is the one word that determines if it's Article 2 or if it's common law? You know the D. So let's take a look. It says... Uh, on page 424, if a contract calls for both the rendering services and supplying materials to be used in performance, performing the services, the contract is classified according to its what? Dominant. Ah, dominant element. That's the key. The dominant element, right? Is the dominant element uh, the service of creating this barn or the cost of it and buying it, right? So here, uh, uh, a homeowner may purchase a security system. The homeowner is paying for the equipment that is used in the system as well as the seller's expertise and installation of the system. Are you with me? Is the homeowner's contract governed by Article 2 or is it a contract for services and covered underneath the common law of contracts? Which is it? You have an alarm system. Let's say the alarm system costs $5,000. But to install it, it costs five hundred dollars. Is it Article Two or is it Common Law? What's the dominant element? In that case it costs five thousand dollars would be a sale, right? Sale of goods, right? Mm -hmm. What if it, it costs a thousand dollars, but to install it, it costs five thousand dollars? What then? What's the dominant element? Element. Um, Service. Install it. Okay. So take a look here. It says, it says, if the if the service element dominates. The contract is a service contract and is governed by common law rather than Article 2. That's an example where it costs $5,000 to install it, right? Service element. It only costs $1,000 to buy it, the item. If the goods make up the dominant element of the contract, then the party's rights are determined underneath Article 2. So it says here, in the security system contract example, the question requires comparing the cost of the system's parts versus what? Versus what? The cost of what? Installation. Everyone see it, where I am? In, in the home security uh, system contract example, the question requires comparing the cost of the system's parts 
versus the cost of the installation. In some contracts, the equipment costs are minimal and the installation is key for the customer. In more sophisticated system, uh, security systems, installation is a small portion of the overall contract price and the contract would be governed by what? Article, uh, by, governed by the UCC. So it's a very important concept. What is the dominant element? Is it common law services or is it uh, Article 2, the goods? Any questions on that? So what happened to this one with uh, triple? What's this going to be? Well, I'll put it up here for you. Application UCC, right? It says the court held that the UCC does not apply and there was no warranty protection. The main what? Okay. Was what? Construction. Service. Right? The dominant element was construction, was a service, right? Not the sale of the products. It was a service, not a sales contract. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. So we look at what's the dominant element. You're going to get this, right? And you, you, you can nail it, okay? I say, well, the dominant element in this case was the fact that uh, uh, the construction of the barn, that was the dominant element, not buying the goods, right, for it. And therefore, it's not a sales contract, it's a common law contract, okay? A service contract. Now, the example I like in the textbook that they gave also about the security system, if the security system costs, if the security system costs, oh, and let me, whoever's watching, let me, let me put this up here, my beautiful people. Okay, guys, see that? So the security system costs $5,000, right? $5,000 for the system itself, but to install it, it costs $1,000. What's the dominant element in this case? The sale of it costs what? The sale is what, my one people? How much? $5,000. $5,000. To install it, it costs what? $1,000. The service is $1,000. So therefore, if there's a lawsuit, you can sue underneath what are, what, uh, sorry, underneath which, um, which um, a system? <laughs> which one? UCC or? UCC. Contract, service. The answer is why? Because the $5,000, right, the sale is dominant, okay? Reverse it, make the service 5,000, and then make the uh, installation, uh, 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 I'm sorry, make the uh, service 5,000, and then uh, make the buying of it 1,000, the sale, it's 1,000. Now, if there's a problem, can you use Article 2? No, you can't. Why? Because that's not the dominant element. The dominant element is the service, and that's what's going on in this case right here. Court held the UCC does not apply, and there was no warranty protection. The main object of the contract was construction of the barn. Yeah, it messed up, right? But you have to sue on what? Common law, right? Not a sale uh, uh, of the product. It was a service, not a sales contract. Therefore, you cannot use Article 2 to bring your lawsuit. Everybody with me? All right, very important concept. Very, very good. Very good. That's, that's, that's. Let me ask you the next question here I usually ask. Um... Oh, I usually have someone read this. On page uh, 425, 22-1C, I have down here read, CPA examination, and uh, um, formation of sales contract, necessary detail for formation. So want to read that for me, please? Sure. To streamline business transactions, Let's stop right there. What have we learned from that one sentence? Thank you for reading that, Christina. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mustafa, what have we learned from that one sentence? What do you see there in that one sentence? Uh, hmm? Doesn't have what kind of standards? Strict, rigid standards. How come? How come we don't have rigid standards for Article 2? What's the purpose? What's the beginning of that sentence said? 
that Christina read for us. What's the beginning set? What does that mean to streamline business transactions? What's that mean? What's that mean, Isa? Hmm? The streamline. To streamline business transaction. What's it mean to streamline something? To move it. To move it what? Quickly? Right? Mm -hmm. Why do we want to move things quickly? Isa? Mustafa? Christina? Why? Back out. Now what else though? We want to what we want to what? Show me the who? Oh, right. oh we want to make that money, right? We want to make sure that we can, we can, uh, um, uh, you already read this, 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 uh, this uh, um, chapter where, you know, um, all you need is subject matter quantity, you have a contract, right? Everything like that. You don't have, even have the price, okay? Our UCC fills in all those gaps, right? So here, we're streamlining our business transactions to what? Make that money, right? So it says to, to stream, I always stop here and ask that question too, to streamline business transactions, Article 2 of the UCC does not have rigid uh, 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 as st standards, does not have standards as rigid as the formation standards of common law contracts. Remember, mirror image rule for common law had to be exactly the same. If you're going to buy the house, everything has to be exactly the same in the contracts, right? We sign, everything like that, right? Mirror image rule, right? Here, we don't have that. What's the next sentence say, um, uh, student Issa, under the UCC? Thank you. What's that mean, Mustafa? What's that mean? I know I like to nitpick, but this is very important. Because once you get these concepts, you're set. You know, a whole lot. Because you, 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 everything builds. What's that mean, Mustafa? Thank you for reading that, Isa. What's, what's she read for us? What's it mean? On the UCC, a what? Are left open? You can leave. You can leave contract terms open, and we still have a, a contract. And the answer why is show me that money. We want to streamline business. We want to keep things moving. We want to we want to make that 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 that, that dollar bill right. Uh, <laughs> but it's just what. So long as what. Okay. What does that mean by intention? What's it mean the intent? They have the intent to enter into a contract, right? Yeah. So we don't have all the all, 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 all the uh, um, uh, exact terms of the agreement, but we want to make a contract. UCC says, yeah, okay, not a problem, right? Look what it says here. The minimum, the bottom page 425, the minimum terms required for formation of an agreement under the UCC are what? What do you need? The subject matter. Oh, you go, guys. Subject matter on what? That's it. Subject matter. I wish I had me before I, I went to law school. Or even tomorrow. I wish I had me. You know, the me I am right now could explain this. You know what I'm saying? All you need are two things. Subject matter, quantity. We have a contract. My beautiful people. Right? UCC. Right? We have a contract. The minimum terms required for the formation of an agreement I'm sorry, we have an agreement. I'm sorry. We have an agreement on the UCC are subject matter and quantity. If there is more than what? If there's more than one. What's the example they give us? An agreement that described the sale of my white cyan would, uh, would be sufficient, but agreement to purchase some white cyans would require quantity in order to what? Qualify for formation. Other provisions on Article 2 can cover only what? Can cover any what? Missing terms, so long as the parties are clear on their intent to what? Make a contract. Article 2 has provisions that cover what? Price. Remember I said that we, we can leave out the price, right? Uh, delivery time. Time for performance. Payment. Other details of performance in the event that what? Parties agree to a sale but have not what? Or what? To what? They haven't put it in writing?
And we signed a contract? Whoa, they really want to make that money, huh? On page 426, huh? Now, distinctions. Merchant versus non-merchant parties. What's the rule underneath Article 2? Because Article 2 applies to all transactions in goods. It is applicable to sales by both merchants and non-merchants, including consumers, including... What's that mean? Thank you for reading that. What's that mean? Because Article 2 applies to all transactions and goods, okay, it's applicable to sales by both merchants and non-merchants, including consumers. So that means that merchants and non-merchants have to follow the rules, and consumers too. In most instances, the UCC treats all buyers and sellers what? Oh, alike. Uh-oh, conjunctive adverb. Next sentence, what does it say? Might wanna be both. Mm-hmm. Let's stop there. What? What's it saying here? However, your conjunctive adverb, right, showing uh, opposite coming up. Some sections in Article Two are applicable only to whom? Merchants. What's the result of it being only applicable to merchants? My wonderful people. They have a what? What's the last two words in that sentence? Different what? Yeah. See how we use the SQ through our system here also, right? Survey, question, read, recite, review. And how when you analyze, you, 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 you sometimes give the word followed by meaning, meaning followed by word, right? Sometimes word, the first half, paragraph, meaning, second half. As we analyze what's going on, or even just analyze the systems themselves, because there's so much information packed in here. So we learn here, because Article 2 applies to all transaction goods, it's applicable to what? Both merchants and non-merchants, right? And, and uh, consumers. Okay, good, everybody. In most instances, you see it treats all buyers and sellers alike. However... In some section, Article 2, are applicable only to what? Merchants. Only the merchants have to follow that rule. As a result, there are circumstances in which merchants are subject to what? Different standards and different what? Rules. Different standards and different rules in some cases. Generally what? These what? Thank you. Um, I, I have my margin here. What does this reflect? You just answer that, right? What's that mean generally? These, I think reading that these areas of different treatment reflect the UCC's recognition of merchants are experienced. What's that mean? Meaning having experience. They should know what? The merchants. The rules. Yeah, right? Even the custom and usage that goes on in their particular business, mm -hmm. you know, everything like that. Uh, 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 and they have what? Has special knowledge of the relevant commercial practices, how things are done in commerce for their particular business, and often need to have greater what? And in there, make, make, making that money, right? Mm -hmm. The sections that have different rules for merchants and non-merchants are noted throughout chapters 23 to 26. Okay, very good. CP examination. Offer. Look what it says. Just as at common law, what? The offer is the what? Yep. Sale, a sales contract on Article 2, okay? So they're the same there, right? We have our offer, right? You see as differences with common law offers, right? One of which is called the what? We saw this last semester. Now we go a little deeper into it. Called the what? The firm who? Yeah, the firm offer vision, right? Which is a what? Special rule. Oh, it's only applicable to merchants.
The firm offer is only applicable to merchants, right? It's a special rule, okay, uh, 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 which we've seen before. A firm offer by a merchant cannot be revoked if the offer what? One, expresses an intention that it will be what? Kept what? S. It must be what? Number two? In writing. Number three? Signed by the merchant. Now, the period of irrevocability. I remember all this stuff for bar exam too in law school all this stuff, right? It's all CPA exam, right? It's right there, right? You have to know this, right? The, the period of irrevocability in a merchant's firm offer cannot exceed what? Now, if no specific time is given the merchant's firm offer for duration, it remains irrevocable only for a what? Reasonable time. A firm offer need not have consideration to be irrevocable for a period of three months. What? What's that mean? Issa, what's that mean? A firm offer need not have consideration to be irrevocable for a period of three months. What's that mean? We don't need what? What's consideration? Something of what? Of value, right? So uh, we don't need to have consideration. What's the example they give us? Anybody? A rain check? A rain check given by a store on advertised merchandise is a merchant's firm offer. The rain check guarantees that you will be able to purchase two bottles of Windex at a dollar and nine each for a period of specified in the rain check. For non merchant offers and, and offers in which the parties want firm offers. Thank you very much. And we've seen that already, right? Remember in chapters 11 and 12? Remember we went over this before? Uh, we went over uh, firm offers and, and option contracts. So if you're not a merchant, thanks for reading that. Thank you all for reading. You have to give what, Miss Issa? Mr. Mustafa, you have to give what? If you're a non-merchant, in this example, you must give what? Consideration, right? But if you're a merchant, what's the rule? Do you have to give consideration? No, right? But, but you have to have, a, what are the rules for a firm offer? We're on page 426. You'll have to listen to that tape, you know, the part that you're out. I'll, I'll, I'll see. You'll have to listen to the tape for this part. I just went over some very important things, you know. Uh, uh, it's all important, but, but, uh, but the firm offer, what? For a merchant, you don't need consideration because what? For that period of time, as long as you have what? Number one, express intention it, it, that, it be, uh, that it will be kept open. Two, is in writing. Three, is signed by the merchant, right? So there are different rules, merchant versus non-merchant. We already learned that all Article 2, uh, because Article 2 applies to all transaction goods, applicable to sales by both merchants and non-merchants, including consumers. And in most instances, UC treats all buyers and sellers alike. However, we learned about what? Some sections of Article 2 are applicable only to merchants. As a result, the, there are circumstances in which merchants are subject to what? Different standards and rules. Why? Why do they have different standards and rules? Generally, these areas of different treatment that reflect the GC recognition that merchants are what? Experience, what else? Special knowledge of what? The relevant commercial practices, and they have a need for what? Greater flexibility and showing the money, speed the transaction, okay? All right, very, very good. And then we learned that in common law and also Article 2, the offer is the first step for formation, right? Um, then we learned UC has some differences with common law offers, one of which is the firm offer vision that we went over. Uh, on page 427, um, what, I asked this question, what do we know about acceptance in Article 2? What do we know about acceptance in Article 2, my wonderful people? What do we know?
Reasonable, huh? Thank you. Mustafa, what do you need to have an agreement underneath article? I thought you were reading that, sir, again. What, what do you need, my student? What do you need, Mustafa, in order to have uh, uh, the, an agreement under Article 2? What do you need? What do you need, Isa? What do you need, Christina? What are the things you need? Which is different than common law. What do you need? Back on page, at the bottom of page 425 is the answer. What does it say? The minimum terms required for formation of an agreement under the UCC or the subject matter and quantity. That's it. That's all you need in order to have a UCC uh, formation agreement. All you need for Article 2 was what? Subject matter, quantity, we have a contract, right? Now, I come back to what it says over here about acceptance, right? That we don't even know the price term. We still have a contract? Article 2? You don't know the price term? Is there a contract? Huh? What's the answer to that? We still have a contract. How are we going to determine the price terms for the contract? It'll be based upon what? The UCC, right? The UCC. Remember it says other provisions under Article 2 on top of page 426 can cover any missing terms so long as the parties are clear on their intent to contract. Article 2 has provisions that cover price, delivery, time performance, payment, and other details performance in the event the parties agreed to a sale, but have not discussed or reduced to writing their desires in these areas. All we need is subject matter, quantity, we have an agreement, right? We have an agreement. Now, how do you accept it? On a common law uh, rules on acceptance, which controls with great detail and method of acceptance, you see rules on acceptance are much more what? Flexible, easier, right? Under UCC Article 2, the acceptance of offer may be in what? Any who? Any manner and by what? Any medium that's what? Reasonable under the who? Circumstances. Are you with me? Acceptance can occur through written communication or through what? Performance. So someone, someone we know subject matter quantity, right? And somebody says, okay, uh, um, I'm going to accept that. Or they ship you the items, right? And there is a contract. Well, we decided the price. UCC has gap fillers that will give us, a, uh, uh, tell us how to determine the price. Acceptance can occur through written communication or through performance as when a seller accepts an offer for prompt shipment of goods by simply shipping the goods. However, just as under common law, Article 2 requires that if the offer specifies the manner or medium of acceptance, the offer can be accepted only in that manner. What's that mean, that last sentence? What does that mean, that last sentence? Hmm? If underneath Article 2, when they uh, uh, make the offer, or the guy, make the offer, and they say, the only way you can send this to me is by using Amazon. There's some Amazon workers in here, right? Right. Or by sending it by uh, the U.S. Postal Service by certified return receipt acceptance, the little green, um, you know, the, the, the green certified form. Mail. Yeah, certified mail, the green form, right? Or like that, right? Then in order to send the items, we have to make sure it's what? To accept it, we have to make sure it's what? Certified, right? Everyone with me? So that's what I mean by that last line here. It says, however, just as under common law, Article 2 requires that if the offer specifies the manner or medium of acceptance, the offer can be accepted only in that manner if they choose to specify that. But if they don't, boom, you just ship it, we have a, we have a deal. Now, 
CPA examination again. Acceptance, timing. What's it talking about here? Anybody want to read that for me, please? Thank you very much for reading that. So here we learn that timing, right? Except the timing. The timing rules of common law for determining when a contract has been formed are used to determine formation of contract underneath what? Article 2. With one slight modification, right? The mailbox rule, we talked about that last semester also, right? Applies under the UCC not just for the use of the same method of communication as that used by the offeror, but also applies when what? When the offeror uses any reasonable method of communication, okay? On the common law, what the offeror had to use the same method of communication in order to have the mailbox rule of separate supply. Or UCC, offeror can use what? Any reasonable method by communicating acceptance and still enjoys priority timing of the mailbox rule. Sometimes that makes an acceptance effective when it is sent. Very good. Um, let me see if we have time. Now, question number number two. Let's, let's see if we have time for number two. Yeah, let's see if we can get... Someone read for me, please, uh, on page 443. Question number two, please. Thank you very much for reading that. Okay, my wonderful people. What area of the law has been triggered by this fact pattern, by this question? Question number two in chapter 22. Uh, Specially manufactured, manufactured goods, exactly, yes. Now, my next question. What page in the textbook do we learn about specially manufactured goods? Okay, I've got four, 437, yeah, 437, right? And what, um, what does it say about special manufactured goods? Want to read that for me, please? Of 
For this non-resellable goods exception to apply, the seller must have made a substantial beginning in manufacturing the goods, or if a distributor is a seller, they're procuring them before the buyer indicates that she will not honor the oral contract. The stair lift manufacturer, for example, must have progressed to a point beyond what? Simply ordering materials for construction of the lift because those materials could be used for what? Any lift. Thank you for reading that, right? So here, specially manufactured goods, right, on, on, on page uh, 437, uh, right? No records required, right? Here's an exception to the record rule, right? No records required when the goods are what? Specially made for the buyer and are of such an unusual nature, specific nature, that they're not suitable, we can't use them for sale in the ordinary course of a seller's business, right? Uh, so here, the answer, my wonderful people, let me uh, put that up there for you. So they're not sold goods. If goods are custom manufactured for the buyer, not suitable for the sale to others in the course of the seller's business, and the seller has made substantial progress manufacturing them, never again, substantial progress, right? Then oral contracts for the sale of goods are what? Enforceable, right? Even when not evidenced by writing, only writing, here's it's, it's exception. What, what's the safeguard? Special manufactured goods, right? It wouldn't make it, except for the fact that there was a contract uh, for that. Current will be required to pay RP under special manufactured goods exception. Okay, any questions on that one? So again, knowing the rules, knowing the rules are key, right? That's why I took my time going over these different rules with you, okay? And we're gonna go over some more in the future also, all right? More, more, more future, okay?